Welcome to the TAPS Vocal Music Reading Session presented by J.W. Pepper. These are tried and true concert selections that we'll be sharing with you today. I'm Dana Williams, the Director of Fine Arts with TAPS, and today we have three clinicians that will share their thoughts and ideas about the songs that have proven them to be great selections for their choirs. Today we have Darla Wallace from Monsignor Kelly Catholic High School. Darla, could you introduce yourself? Hi. I'm Darla Wallace. I've been teaching at Kelly High School for a, a few decades with Debbie Prohoda. Debbie's been the director and I've been the accompanist for those decades. She's retired, so I'm going to move into the directorship and um, work with another accompanist for this year. But we're excited to be able to present some pieces we've done with small choirs or larger choirs, which is kind of difficult to find. So welcome today. We also today have Debbie Prehoda with us. Debbie, could you introduce yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Debbie Prehoda. I am Darla Lawless's partner in crime at Kelly High School, newly retired. Um, so I'm here today to just share with you some of the things that she and I have done successfully on this music. We hope you all much success, God bless. And also Christy Rourke from Round Rock Christian Academy. Hi, I'm Christy Roark. I teach at Round Rock Christian Academy. I teach middle school choir and high school choir, as well as fourth and fifth grade music. And uh, I've been teaching in uh, the TAP school. This will be my seventh year. And previous to that, I taught in public school or directed church choirs. And uh, I'm looking forward to sharing some of my favorite successes with you. Thank you, Christy. JW Pepper has an app called ePrint Go, and with this app, they are sharing the songs that we are presenting today with you. So if you go to the jwpepper.com website and go to the My Account over on the side and log in using our event-specific login and password, then it will give you access to the music scores ePrint version until the end of this calendar year. So that's at www.jwpepper.com. You just click the login on my account. Be sure not to use your own Pepper account login uh, and use this one, event1065 at jwpepper.com. And the password is 1065. After you enter that information, you will click on my library and go to your ePrint library. And today we will be focusing on contest music. So you will click the view and print for the contest music and it will pop up a table of contents with all the songs. So if you wanna access the music on your own till the end of this calendar year, you can just log in and click on each of these individual selections to be able to uh, browse the music scores. We're going to start today with a song, uh, Sanctus by Sandra Howard. Debbie? Thank you. Yeah. Um, and, and again, guys, we're hoping to offer to you some of our favorites today the things that have been most successful, um, you know, uh, as we take them to contests and as we take them to concert and as we put them uh, on the stage, things that will help your small choirs to be successful. And so the first one we're looking at is Sanctus. The reason we picked this one is because of the familiar Latin text. Um, you know, a, a chance to learn the appropriate stresses for things like Dominus and Deu and Celi even though in the music, some immature singers would want to say Dominus because of the, the note rises uh, in, uh, on the staff. So it gives you a chance to teach appropriate syllabic stress. It's a great vehicle for diction skills and we loved it for open, pure vowel sounds. Um, it's kind of a chance to show off your choir in their technical ability. And then at one point you'll see where the soprano and tenor have um, an opposite contrapuntal to the alto bass, um, especially toward the end. Listen to, especially measure 42 to the end. This is Sanctus by Sandra Howard. Mm -hmm. 
If I can just add one note about Sanctus, please note that that bass is optional. So when you have a year with a very unbalanced group, or we have a lot of sopranos and a lot of altos and very few guys, you don't necessarily have to split them up. You can opt uh, to just leave all the guys on part three. When they do split, it's often just for just a measure or two. So that's another reason we use that one often. Um, now, going on to Manabu, this is the uh, Hebrew song. And uh, the kids love singing in Hebrew, even though they may not know what they are saying. This piece does give you the option of having a translation. So that's really nice. Uh, we have... Uh, exposure with the Hebrew, you also get the nice pure vowels. That's why Debbie and I often chose songs that were of a foreign language. So you get, you don't have to worry about diphthongs. And this one does combine the the foreign language with the um, English. So you get the translation, but you have to deal with the diphthong. It begins pretty easy, and you may be thinking, why is this a grade three UIL piece? And then, so you're reading through, you want to note the minor tonality and get the kids used to that, which they adapt to pretty quickly. But then when you get to the last two or three pages, it goes crazy. So you have the guys singing, and this is four part. You have the guys singing and the bass love those low notes. And then the girls singing another, almost contrapuntal with different rhythms going on. And if that's not crazy enough, they start with a hand clap and a foot stomp at the end. And Debbie was very particular about their hitting those on the beat. So we often had them tap the beat on their chest. We learned this at a TCDA convention seminar. So they just tap the subdivision. Of course, you can't tap the 16th. And then, um, join in with the foot stomps and but they love it when they finally get it done it but it is a challenge at the end so here is Manavu Snyder Manavu how beautiful 
arranged by Audrey Snyder. Oh, darn, you missed the hand claps. We did. See, and they were great. <laughs> they were great. kicking on that recording. Point, you need to, um, you know, that's a perfect chance to teach uh, correct note values because, you know, sometimes they want to rush and cheat on the, the actual note values. And also about following the conductor, especially if your conductor has a strong downbeat. It, it teaches them to think ahead and not to anticipate the downbeat. So we're going to go into an, an, the next one called Da Pacem Domine. It's gotten really popular lately for contests, and there's good reason for that. It's not really difficult up front at first. Um, we did this twice, once in 06 and once again in 13, and we'll probably bring it back. Oh, I don't know. Darla might bring it back. It's really um, really good for uh, a cappella, strong a cappella, standalone singing. Um, we did it kind of the year after Sanctus for the same reasons we did Sanctus. Um, you know, vowels and diction and uh, consonant articulation. Um, we did it in uh, our fall concert with our boys included. And then we took the boys out for contests. And the girls' large treble group um, offered this as their a cappella thing. Um, let's hear Da Pacem Domine. This is Mary Getz. We're going to bring in another Getz arrangement a little bit later for you, too. Da Pacem Domine. It's very short, so once you get it um, accomplished, you know, and just about the time your audience is listening, you're done. I would be very careful about that domine that they seem to have had on that recording. Be careful about um, do, mi, ne, and opening those vowels. We don't close down vowels in Latin, so. Darla? Yeah, so our next one is Etnin Terra Pox Hair. Again, we have a pronunciation warning because kids see and we see I N and we want to say et in, et in Terra Pox, but of course in Latin it's in. They have a really good uh, pronunciation guide, although it doesn't give you all of the syllabic stresses for that. But uh, the, the writer is Mary Lightfoot, which we have another one by her later. This is an SSA piece, so we're moving on now to 
Well, we just did one that was uh, all girls. Here's another all girls. We seem to be heavy with girls. In fact, a couple of years, we have not entered the, a mixed ensemble because we've had so few guys. We let the guys enter as a small ensemble and not a large ensemble. But Et Inter Pax is, again, a good Latin text that's common to many uh, sacred music pieces and uh, gives them a lot of opportunity to learn some melodic phrasing and growing and shaping those phrases. So they start out with a held note. They know it has to go someplace. So they can uh, crescendo and decrescendo within those phrases. And that's what we like most about this piece is just that ability to, to shape the phrases. One word of warning on this, the alto parts get pretty low, which thrills the altos because they get to show off that chest voice, but careful not to let them become belters with that. There are some uh, leaps that are pretty tricky uh, that are unison. So there again, word of caution on that. That's at measure 27. Second soprano has a, a repeating motif toward the end at uh, measure 53, they get to say, sing that etin terra pox uh, over and over, and then they have this really tricky leap. So that's again, another word of warning. But it's a lovely piece and it's also available in SATB, which is also a grade three. This is a grade three as well. So SSA for grade three or SATB, if you have the guys that you can do that with. There, it is available in two part with a grade two. So in many adaptations to this piece that was written in 2008. Let's listen to Et in Terra Pax.
Yeah, that two part version missed a little bit of that inside harmony that they split off to a second soprano part. If you can do the three part, it's it's quite lush and it really adds to those beautiful phrases Darla was talking about. Okay, so uh, we're moving on. The next uh, song on your list is Give Way Jordan. This is the other Mary Getz piece that I mentioned a little bit earlier. We did this in the late 2000s and then again in 212 um, with probably one of our most talented singers ever kind of in the lead. She's now uh, having to sit out New York and Broadway, but she's been there and waiting for it to start again. So we're in prayer for those people. Uh, Give Way Jordan. This kind of, the most fun part about this one is the cascading at the beginning. Uh, it just kind of folds on top of each, each other, the three parts. And, and then the alto gets like an answer throughout the entire song. The sopranos are in harmony and do one piece and then the, the altos will answer it back again. Uh, the chorus at 21 echoes all those things all over again. The end is a little bit of a challenge, especially for the conductor. But what I would do is be sure you rehearse yourself, get in the mirror, rehearse yourself before you go in front of your choir to teach it so that you're sure about bringing those kids in. Again, the cascading thing. Um, and it's really fun. They do enjoy this. This is Give Way Jordan. Well, it sounds like they cut that one off too. Your accompanist won't have trouble with that one. That's the good news. <laughs> <laughs> Although it was very hard for me to sit when we were in competition because I couldn't do anything, just sit and listen and pray. Uh, the next piece we're gonna look at, we're now switching to some um, men's pieces. We're gonna start with another Lightfoot, Mary Light, Mary Lynn Lightfoot piece, a jubilant Gloria. This one is so much fun. The guys don't like it at first because the rhythms are switching, but when they realize that they can tap the eighth note on their chest, I don't like to tap the feet because that creates a sound. They can tap the eighth note on their chest and then it doesn't change. The eighth note stays constant. So it might be one, two, three, four, five, six, one and two and three and. So that helps quite a bit. And then they feel quite accomplished after that. We actually took this as a small ensemble, even though it's a TTB, we took it with eight guys because when it does split with the tenor, it, it's not for very long and it's not very difficult. Uh, at the end, the tenor does get up kind of high. So you gotta make sure you've got a guy who can really hit that G, treble G. Uh, but most of the time tenors are together and basses are together and it's just a fun, fun piece with the, uh, changing meters. So, uh, and you don't have to worry much about diphthongs again. So we have those pure vowels. It was uh, a pretty successful piece for our small group of guys. So it is a level two. You can then enter that as a small ensemble 
I think Rena might have to correct me. If you're a, a as much as a 4A school, you can enter a level two as a small ensemble. So this might be an option for you. A jubilant Gloria. never forget Dylan on that last note. Wow. Oh, okay. So that was the, that was not the guy's version. I mean, it's the same music, but it wasn't the TT, TBB parts, but um, I looked and I see it's available as a TB. I'm, I was trying to see if the others were PML on the PML list, but um, only the tenor bass is PML. Yeah. I think that's the only one that is, I don't know. I, I was trying to check real quickly and it wasn't working with me, but good option for a small ensemble or if you are lucky and fortunate enough to have a large group of guys, take it with a large ensemble guys. Now Let Me Fly was uh, written by Linda Spevacek. Um, she is a prolific writer. I know you all know her compositions already. And like that last piece, this one comes in all varieties. I mean, you can, as a level three, it's TBB and SSA and SAB and SATB. We took it with our guys. Um, so, because the bass has the melody and they're feeling all strong and, and mighty. The tenor gets this wonderful Divisi just before the key change. And then they take over the lead. Um, this one, this piece teaches them to energize and spin these long notes. They really enjoy listening to their voice once they realize with support that it becomes even more beautiful the more they hold it instead of letting it die, you know, and then it doesn't go out of tune. It's got a dramatic ending. Uh, the basses again get to show off the melody and the tenors absolutely love that ending Divisi. Now let me fly Fevichek. Chariot wheel, not so particular about working at the wheel. 
ATB version that they just played um, it, as a sacred ensemble. So, and that they loved it. But you, you can do that as a guy's piece for a small ensemble, or if you've got a, a guy's um, large ensemble, it's a you know it's a UIL piece, or you can do the four part, the big with the full group, and it's a sacred ensemble because you don't have to have a UIL for that PML off the PML. Sorry. <laughs> Hello. I've enjoyed those songs so much. So good. Yeah. Oh, the first one that I'm gonna talk about is one that I actually sang in middle school choir when I was in middle school choir. So this one has just stuck with me for I would say 40 years, I will be walking around my house singing this song. And when a tune is that much of an earworm, you know it's a good thing. And when I was in middle school choir, I think if, I think if it had not been for middle school choir, I would have never been a choir director because that is when I fell in love with just that choir sound and the harmony. At the school that I went to, we had a really good girls choir and the boys choir was separate, but honor choir, you know, that was the first time you got to hear that four part harmony. And um, my first year there, we had the privilege of having Dr. Bev Henson as our honor choir choral director. So it was, it was just like magic. And I still remember us working on all the crescendos and the day crescendos. And um, it was just so much fun that I think uh, this is definitely worth taking a look at, even though I'm sure it was brand new in the year that I sang it as a kid. <laughs> now it definitely is tried and true because it's still around. Um, some things that I remember learning then as a student um, are things like no two notes are alike and making every word different than the one before every dynamic level a little bit louder than the one before and that no two sections of a song are going to be alike and i remember this quote as well if a composer can write a crescendo he surely knows enough not to write one so it's very specific if there's not one there you don't do it if there is one there he really really wants you to crescendo uh, it gives students, even though it is a class two, there's still a lot for them to work with. They get to sing lots of half steps in this. There's uh, chromatic 
phrasing at the bottom of page five. Um, there is still a key signature. And then what I particularly love is the five, four meter at the bottom of page seven, because I think that's a real challenge. And there's something about five, four. I just love to find a song that has a section in five, four. Um, I think it's great for beginning bass singers because they do stay on do a lot. Um, but it's just a very singable bass part. And that tends to be the section in my choirs that we spend the most time working on for some reason. It's always the bass section. Love their little hearts. So let's listen to Walk in Jerusalem Just to Like John. I want to be ready. I want to be like John. And, um, you know, when you listen to the demo voices, there's always so much more than you could, that you can really do with it than what you're just hearing those voices do. In my head, it sounds a little bit different. I'm not sure that one did not have a very dominant bass part that I could hear through, through my sound system here. I'm not sure if that was a three part version, but anyway, fun song, fun song. Um, the next song that I'm going to talk about is Stars I Shall Find by Victor C. Johnson. Um, this is a song that I have actually done with middle school choir. Um, it was an honor choir piece uh, several years ago for middle school, and this was their audition piece. So I taught it to the whole middle school choir, and this is just one of the most loved songs that I think I have ever taught a middle school choir. Um, and I had a large number of kids make the honor choir and so they got to perform it. Now our springs here at Round Rock Christian are just very, very busy because we have, um, you know, solo and ensemble with taps is pretty usually late in March. And then we're, you know, into April for the large ensemble contest the large choir events. And then we do our musicals at the end of the year in May. So that time of the year, we are just working on so many things at one time. So I try to find as many pieces that we can take to contests at the end of the year that we can start learning earlier in the year. And I know that's contradictory and I've heard choir directors at conferences say, never start teaching your concert pieces 
or your contest pieces early in the year because you're going to have a different sounding choir second semester than first semester. But with our situation, sometimes I just have to risk it and try to find some pieces that we can include in our Christmas concert that we can also do for contests. And this is a song that I think fits in with Christmas very, very well. Actually, my middle school kids that year sang it as part of their Christmas concert, and it was definitely a favorite. Um, the lyric, um, Sarah Teasdale, I mean, her poetry, it's, it just sparkles. It just absolutely sparkles. Um, and I love that there's so much musicality to work on. There's retards, there's working to sing with building motion. And then when you get to that broadening section, uh, that big moment at the top of page five, and it goes to some five part harmony there. That's really good for your developing second sopranos. And I do love a song that is accessible, but yet you get to those places where it does have some five part harmony. Um, this was just very, very loved. And my kids don't know it yet, but I'm fixing to be bringing this back for high school. So some of those that were in middle school are fixing to get to sing it again uh, at a whole new level of musicality. So let's listen to Stars I Shall Find. I just think that Victor C. Johnson did a wonderful job just with that, the whole, his melody, his lyrics, his harmony, just absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Um, 
The next piece I want to talk about, Hear My Prayer by Moses Hogan. Uh, this one, we did do this song successfully, but I had a few terrifying days along the way <laughs> because it's, it, is, it is harder than it looks. They have it as a class three, but, um, you know, on the surface, it looks very, very doable. I mean, good grief, it's only two pages long. <laughs> but it was, it was definitely a challenge. My kids ended up doing it um, at TAPS. They ended up making a wand on it. And wow, that was quite a celebration when they did do that. Uh, they performed this the same year that the Texas Small School All-State Choir performed this under the direction of Dr. Sandra Snow. And we were working on this song and I was at TMEA and in her introduction, she called it um, a, a deceptively easy song. And when I heard her saying that, I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm not crazy. I actually gave my students an easier option and offered to let them switch songs, but they were determined because they really, really loved it. When you get the song right, it is just one of those that gives you goosebumps. It's just like, you feel like heaven comes down into the room. Uh, when you read about uh, Moses Hogan and uh, some of the things that he had to say, I had a post-it note on mine with, uh, when, when we, I was working on the song where Moses Hogan, it was one of his quotes that said, uh, keep your mind on Jesus and your eyes on me. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty good because you definitely want them um, you know, watching you when you do this, because there's just so much in these two pages. Uh, one thing that you really want to do is be sure that you have the bases to rumble, to do that low E flat and hold it stagger breathing. You know, when you look at the, the from measure 24 through the end of the song, it's like, you need that E flat. You need some guys that, um, can actually do that. Uh, I had just enough to really give us that foundation right there. And I was so worried. That was one of my big stresses of the year was that they were going to get sick and not be able to be at the contest and sing the low E flat. Uh, the Sopranos, of course, loved measure 20 through the end where they got to do that first soprano de VC and go up for the high G. Uh, they loved that. They did not struggle um, my, the, the things I remember being spreading the guys out to three parts harmony on this was a little more difficult, but, um, you know, if you, if you have enough to do it, it is just one of my favorite pieces ever. So let's listen to hear my prayer. Hear my prayer by Moses Hogan. This will be starting at measure 16. I could barely hear that at the end. I think they're done. I think they have the amen there. Um, if you can uh, find maybe on YouTube, the Texas Allstate Choir uh, doing that song is definitely worth, worth listening to. 
okay, a big change from that song, but still with um, sacred lyrics. Uh, Is God Be In My Head by Andrea Ramsey. Um, I've done this with a very young beginning girls choir before. And uh, this is actually one that I'm going to start working on this year because I love the text so much. Um, This is, you know, from a text from 1514 in the service book uh, used in Clare College, Cambridge. So a very, very old text, but um, it's just one that I think that is so important uh, when we're, we're doing a mix of music. I'd love to have some some songs with, with a lyric, with a text that really causes the students to self-reflect. You know, what am I saying? What am I looking at? What am I doing? And uh, just a, a good thing in this year, this is one I'm going to be starting with. Uh, it has a lot of unison in the song, but I think that is a good way to start uh, with your girls, just getting them to blend. I tend to have girls at many different singing levels because, um, and I'm sure in most of our 3A or under tap schools, we just have one high school choir. So if we perform as a mixed choir and a girls choir and a men's choir, we just have one choir period every day. So it is a struggle. We're doing so much more <laughs> with less time than at the big high school across the street. So, um, so this is one that, that we really use to, that I'm going to use to work on the unison sound, pulling the bigger voices down, trying to get those with smaller voices to, to sing out and to really look at the text and, um, teach them to, to look at this text, text and let us, let us paint the meaning of this text, but we have to all interpret it just alike. And we have to sing it as if it is our very own interpretation. So basically, um, I will go through the process of, you know, letting them decide what's important, what lyric, what word, what is our main word, what are we going to stress here? And then we mark it and um, get our, our, our one common interpretation of this song. So let's listen to this by Andrea Ramsey, God Be In My Head.
there's something about that in its simplicity that it still just hits me in the heart and gives me a little bit of goosebumps when I hear that. Um, you know, these kids are going through so much right now with, are we in school? Are we out of school? Are we online? They missed so much last year. You know, there's a lot of our understanding, so many things we don't understand. So I think we need some, some songs in hand going into this year that give us a chance to talk about what might be on their minds and what might be in their hearts as students. The next song is um, probably the all-time favorite of travel choirs that I've done. We did this a couple of years ago, Heart, We Will Forget Him, with uh, words by Emily Dickinson and music by Laura Farnell. Um, the girls, you can imagine high school girls, they have almost all experienced some heartbreak. And somehow the choir I had that year, this was just something that they loved to sing about, something they liked to talk about because of the actual poem of Emily Dickinson. It was never when I said heart and it was time to practice this, nobody ever, ever complained. It was their most exciting time of the choir period. Um, we did have to work on breathing a lot. It has a lot of beautiful, long, long phrases. I have heard it said that the most beautiful distance between two points is a curved line. And of course, that means the beautiful phrase that you can make with um, lines of music. So this was really, really good for developing their breathing and their support. Um, what, another thing that I remember that we had to work on was finding unison. I believe it is at measure 19. I think it's one example of where they come back to unison. And that was something they were so used to having harmony that somebody would try to harmonize. <laughs> you would hear a couple of voices going to harmony. So that is one thing that I always do is go through and have them find and mark every place that we all get back to unison and we all sing together. At the end, um, there is a section where they do all sing in unison and it builds and builds and it turns into something uh, great. You know, they also get to practice singing really soft in this song. And it was a great opportunity for us to work on singing soft yet still having intensity and resonance, but yet soft. Soft, soft is not puny. It's not just, you know, like your little mouse voice. It's, it's still supported and gorgeous. Uh, for this song, my second sopranos were definitely, I called them the VPs. This was like their song because um, they had a number of dissonant harmonies. It's the, the second soprano. If you look from the very beginning, measure six, they're on fa. They're hanging on to fa against the do and the so. And then they get to resolve that. And that little theme kind of follows through the song. So um, we, you have some good second sopranos that, that love, you know, they're those girls that just, they love that dissonant harmony. They just really enjoy singing that. It is definitely a, a good year to do this song. Um, and when, you know, you have a song with a text that they can relate to, I think you just have lots of good teaching opportunities because they're so in. So let's listen to Heart, We Will Forget Him by Laura Farnell. Heart, We Will Forget Him by Laura Farnell.
and the next section is even more gorgeous and lovely. <laughs> so, um, I, I love that song. Very, very good. Uh, the next one, she is evening by Vicki Tucker Courtney. Uh, this is one that I was actually working on last year that, um, I was going to be entering, a, a men's choir at taps before everything went down and thing after thing was canceled. And uh, this is one that I had uh, been working with my men on all year and it's a class two. And, um, and actually my guys had a hard time with this one, but I'm still recommending it because I think what it helped them do was actually control their voices. I had done this previously with some of those same guys when they were in middle school and you know, they had like the sweet, mostly unchanged voices for middle school. But when they came back as high school students, you know, a lot of them, maybe they're used to singing pop music or big and boisterous. They kind of have these, and it's hard for them to contain it and it's hard for them to make it resonant. And uh, this one just really worked their voices over. And also they were not used to singing in three-part harmony as just a men's choir, because that, since I've been in a tap school, I haven't entered just a men's choir by themselves. And um, so they were not used to dividing. So this was good because it gave those second tenors, you know, they had to step out and sing something by themselves, but not all the time just some time. So over the year, they got better and better. They got more used to just containing their voice. And um, I would not recommend this if you have really low basses because it doesn't have a really low bass part. There's no low E flat to sing like in Hear My Prayer. But if you are missing the very low voices, um, it's it's very good. And of course, if you had, you know, just a, an, an advanced middle school voice choir, it would be perfect for that. But I have found that a lot of advanced middle school pieces that are SATB or the TTBs or the three-part girls, they do work really well for my, my choirs because I do have so many students here that are just at so many different levels. I have kids just come in that don't read music at all. Um, you know, it's, it's just its own little, little animal. So let's listen to She is Evening. Right. In that one, um, they liked it 
a lot better after the key change when they could sing forte and they could, you know, that one got, got better and better, but it did really improve their voices over the year. Um, the last one that we're going to look at is uh, Cantate Domino. And this one on the PML, you can do this a cappella as well as with accompaniment. So you have the choice on that. Um, this one, I consider this to be a bass VIP song. Um, you know, most of the time they're kind of stuck in harmony unless they're singing melody with everybody else. But this one, the basses do, you know, they do the entry. They're, they're first up to introduce the melody and it's joyful. And actually this year, I'm planning on us doing this for our Christmas concert and uh, probably do it acapella because I think all of our concert opportunities this year, we are gonna look for outdoor places to perform. So I'm gonna try to do as much acapella as possible this year with the whole COVID and uh, social distancing and singing. So this is one that we are gonna start working on this year. And uh, I just have the highest expect expectations for it. And uh, love Laura Farnell, obviously, as you can see with things I have picked today. And uh, I know that it's probably all things that you are familiar with, but I think it's just still good to get somebody else's take on it and how their kids reacted to it. So let's listen to Cantate Domino. Cantate Domino by Laura Farnell. joyful. So that is all that I have today. This has been fun. Awesome. Well, look now if everybody, if you're not so tired and your ears are not bleeding because all that music was wonderful, uh, at the list that Vina has included for alternates. Um, these are here because we don't have recordings to share with you, but J.W. Pepper in their infinite library does have them. Um, you can go there and listen, just call it, call that up on the JW uh, Pepper web website. You can listen to some of these. And um, these are some that Darla and I have used in our program that we just kind of wanted to add for your, your extra thought. Your voice's tune is classical, a handle piece. We used it in a small ensemble. We liked it most for its terrace dynamics, you know, rather than the, the romantic swells and comeback downs and stuff. It teaches your kids uh, about the old practice of terrace dynamics too, and through phrasing, not breaking your phrases where uh, you're just dying for out of breath. Um, we were actually lucky enough that that was an all region piece one year. <laughs> and so the kids that had learned it and sang in the all region choir got to sing it again in a small ensemble. That was fun. Yep, worked for us. And Lord, I knew I've been changed um, we, we actually took it to contest in 13. Of course, it's not on the UIL, but
but we loved sacred ensembles and our kids. I think like it, it is now they've added yeah, it. But you're right. I saw that too. That one needs a really strong bass section. It's a contemporary gospel, so don't swing it and you don't want to rush it. Um, except at contests, you could add gym bays and maybe even shakers would be a nice addition. Um, the sopranos might get a little bit carried away on that one, but it's a, a lovely contemporary gospel piece. In Time of Silver Rain is another one of the things we took as a small ensemble, like the first one. We did that way back in 1995 and then again in 13. Um, there's there's wonderful chances for what Christy was talking about with phrasing um, and teaching them to swell and not no note is the same ever. No two notes are the same. It also has a neat emphasis on one and two beats. Even though you're in full four time, it's really cool because you emphasize one and two and then you just sing through three and four and then go back to one and two again. Kind of a word painting song. It has slide of celerandos within a phrase. It makes them really beautiful. Of course, there's a Picardy third at the end. And if you're like me and that's not your favorite thing, <laughs> but it is pretty on, on In Time of Silver Rain. Um, Sivy Vaughn is another Hebrew, you know, Darla mentioned uh, one of the Hebrew things that we love. Sivy Vaughn is another one. We're actually thinking about uh, redoing that one pretty soon. Uh, it celebrates the Hanukkah toy, the dreidel. And it's a four part acapella for girls. Um, it's still just a level three, but it's kind of difficult. It calls for a light, precise diction. You, you got to watch your kids not to slide. Tell, you know, teaching them not to slide. Between eight they minutes. Um, but they were really proud of their accomplishment on this one. Sidney Vaughn, that's a Bertal piece. It's copyrighted in 1985, but it's based on uh, an early centuries uh, Hebrew folk song. Um, medieval Gloria was a guy for us. We did it a cappella. It calls for a hand drum. Again, you know, it's a great choice for diction. Gloria and in instead of in. Excelsis, uh, Manus, you know, teaching them not to do Magnus and things like that. And there's a lot of repetition of the chorus, the chorus for the guys. So if you handle the verses at measure nine and measure 21, they are eight measure verses. And then after that, you go back to the chorus and you, you know, a chance to elevate every time you sing it, you sing it differently with more excitement and more accomplishment and medieval Gloria. Um, two more that we liked, the Melodian, uh, an accessible German piece. If you're ready for German, it's a Brahms two part. You got to be sure that you're conducting that in two, not in four. It's written in four, four time. But in order for it to flow, you have to be sure you're conducting in, in, in longer phrases and not letting them emphasize every single note. That's a Galena piece, um, copywritten in 14. We actually did it the last year. We got to go to TAPS at 2019 with our girls. And the last one was kind of a surprise for me and for Darla. We were conducting a church choir and we fell in love with Joseph Martin and his little contemporary cantatas, just so accessible and so melodic that we did several of them, you know, and that they weren't, they didn't begin to sound alike for us at all. And then we heard at contest, we heard a taps group do come to the music. It's kind of, uh, and we were really impressed with, with the, it was a difference from all the church music they had done. So we tried it, it's dance-like, it's rhythmic, it's in 6-8 that goes to 2-4, kind of Celtic in the way it feels. It's really sweet with a piccolo and percussion, but be sure you use accomplished musician for that. You don't want any beginners and, you know, you don't want to just do it because you want to give your sweet little girl in high school a chance. Um, if you're going to take it to contest, that piccolo part is percussive and 16th notes and it's, it's really beautiful. Um, expression changes within the piece. You go from that um, really peppy thing to a legato sound, but you never change the six eight two four until uh, in later on you've got a legato four four thing. It becomes really dynamic and it's very accented for the ending. The kids are very proud of their performance on come to the music. So anyway, consider um, those things on the alternate list too. At the risk of boring you stiff today, ladies, have y'all anything to add? No, I think we said it all. 
<laughs> well, I want to thank you three ladies for spending your time with our TATS teachers and sharing this music with them. I think uh, a lot of these pieces are so lovely and kind of makes me wish I was conducting choirs <laughs> still. <laughs> um, so thank you all for joining us today for this concert selection reading session presented by J.W. Pepper. Uh, to request your CPE certificate and send us feedback. Um, send that to info at taps.biz. Remember that the ePrint Go access for this session will be available through the end of 2020. Uh, we hope to try to put together a sacred and so choir session uh, in the coming, I don't know, maybe a month or so. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, please send your feedback on this session so we know how we can tweak it. Um, for contacting the TAPS office, our website is www.taps.biz. If you have email questions, feel free to send those to info at taps.biz and there's our phone number. Thank you for joining us today.